Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 81. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college chat link and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 8. Hey, we're in Chapter 8 here. We're talking about confidence intervals. Now, we just did our first video. We did all the details of confidence intervals. Here, we want to do uh, construct a confidence interval from some raw data. Here, we have some dollar amounts for this is um, the amount spent per individual customer in the Seattle area. So we have some raw data here. And we want to create a confidence interval. Well, first we have to calculate our x bar equals average. And then I'll go ahead and click there, control shift down arrow. And I'm going to use shift enter. Shift enter is nice because it. Uh, well, in this case, it didn't. It usually pushes your cursor up, but it just jumped us right back to where we were. Now we want to do the count equals count. Do the same thing. Control Shift down arrow, and I'm going to do Shift Enter again. Notice it sends the cursor up. It's just a nice way of getting the screen back in view. So we have a sample size of 49, a mean uh, dollar amount of 2480. Now, in our example, the sigma for the population is known. Now, I'm going to show you two methods. We're going to do the z method, where we have to actually calculate the standard error and our z's. And then I'll show you the confidence uh, function level. Let's calculate our standard error. It says sigma there, but it's really standard error. Oh, it's still uh, b standard deviation, but for the distribution of x bars equals, and we know our sigma, so we have that, divided by the square root of our n, 49, close parentheses. Ah, so we have 0.714 is our standard error. Remember, the distribution of x bars, sampling distribution of x bars, always has much less variation. So we have to take whatever that sigma is, if we know it, and really make it a lot smaller. All right. Uh, Let's calculate our alpha. We're going to do confidence level 0.95, so it'll be 95%. Sure. Last example, we did 90. Al uh, s level of significance, or alpha, is the risk we're willing to take that our population parameter is not in our interval, equals 1 minus that right there. We're going to have to calculate alpha divided by 2. Remember, what is alpha divided by 2? That's this amount, if I can find my chart right here. That's that amount right there. It's actually that amount either. Whatever our risk is, if we're doing a two-tail like this, we have to chop it into two pieces. Our textbook always does alpha divided by 2 is, is indicating that area and that z. Oops, I did the wrong keyboard shortcut. Now, I'm going to show you two methods. We'll do the z method, just like we did last time. Now, we want to calculate our lower z. Well, we're going to use our norm s inverse. All it needs is a probability. And since these function always goes fr from negative infinity to our whatever our z or x is, that will do it. Our upper equals. norm s inverse. And now in the handwritten notes, I show you two ways to do this. And I'm going to show you both ways here. The other last time, we just did uh, 1 minus this. Because up on the upper end is that piece right there. So if we subtract that from 1, it'll give us exactly the z we want. Now, sometimes you don't have your alpha divided by 2 already calculated, or for whatever reason. This is perfectly legitimate, too. Equals norm s inverse. And we're going to say, ah, 95 divided by 2. Well, what's 95 divided by 2? 0.45. And since that will always, if we add 0.5 to it, that'll always give it to us on the upper end also. So in the handwritten notes, I have both of these functions. And in the uh, some of the homework assignments, I did it both ways also. Boom. Now margin of error, we take our z, our positive z, and multiply. Remember, that's the number of standard deviations. And we multiply it by the number of standard deviations for our distribution, that standard error. And that is our margin of error, 1.399. Now we can calculate the upper and lower. Remember, 
we have a sample mean, and there is sampling error, and we want to construct a 95% confidence interval. So we have to say for the low end equals, I'm doing all sorts of keyboard. Let's see if I can find, I just hit F11, which is a chart, and F12, which is save as, instead of hitting the equal sign. There we go. Uh, there's our mean we calculated, subtracting from it this margin of error, and then enter. On the upper end, we take our mean, and we add some of this margin of error right there. And so we get 2340 up to 2690. So, we are 95% sure that our population parameter, uh, dollars spent per individual on a restaurant visit, is somewhere between 23.4 uh, and 26.20. Now, the confidence function, we saw that. That means you don't have to actually calculate the standard error or your z. The code behind the scene does it for you, meaning the confidence function, the algorithm for it, equals confidence. And it needs an alpha, and that's the alpha not divided by 2, comma, and it needs the standard deviation. Remember, we don't even have to bother calculating this. It wants the one uh, from our population, comma, and then, of course, it needs to calculate standard error, so we ha it needs size of our sample, the sample size. Now, as we mentioned last time, uh, this is great if you're using x-bars all the time. If you're doing proportions, uh, then we'll use this method, the uh, norm s inverse. And so if you want to just learn one way, do that way, and we can use it for our x-bar and our proportions. All right, and does it calculate the same thing? You bet, with a few less steps, I might add. All right, so then we calculate our upper and lower equals whatever our mean is minus our uh, margin of error equals our mean plus our margin of error. And so here's our conclusion just like last time. The limits for it, let's see if I can scroll over here and uh, scroll down a little bit. Oh, I guess I made it too big. Here's the trick. If you go like that and uh, go to View, Zoom, Zoom to Selection, the keyboard shortcut is Alt-W-G. The limits for the 95% confidence interval are 23.4 and 26.20. It's reasonable to assume that the population mean for mean dollars spent per customer in Seattle restaurant is within our interval, given a 5% risk. And then it goes on just like we did last video. In particular, uh, remind yourself that if you were to construct 100 similar intervals, 95 of them would have the population mean. That is technically what's going on. If the original distribution is uh, normally distributed or the n is very large, then this really does uh, come almost exactly to be true. All right, uh, that is confidence intervals when sigma is known. A couple different ways when we come back, we'll do uh, a confidence interval when sigma is not known and learn about the t distribution. See you next video.